YouTube. It is Monday, uh, August 8th, I think. August 7th. Um, and it's beautiful outside. So hopefully it's not too loud from all the bugs, but I'm going to try filming out here. Hopefully, you know, I don't get bothered by some of the flies that have been roaming around. Um, if you see some dogs or hear some dogs, they're out here too. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of give a update. So as you can see from the title of this video, it's going to be part one of my transition towards intuitive eating uh, and listening a bit more to my body. Um, and then I'm also just going to talk about what my training has become now and what my goals are with that and then just kind of life in general. So I'm going to start off with uh, being back home. Um, I am not personal training right now. I am still currently taking online clients. So if you guys are interested in online training, make sure you either comment below, go ahead and DM me on Instagram at MeganJ.fit or check out my website link. Um, it's MeganJFitness.com and I will put that in my bio or the description box for this. Um, but I am taking online clients, but I'm not training in an actual gym. So I actually start serving at Buffalo Wild Wings on Thursday. I have my orientation on Thursday. Um, I have worked in the food service industry for since I was a sophomore, freshman in college. So it was actually before that because I worked at Cold Stone for a couple years in high school. Um, but food, like serving wise, bartending wise, I've been for the past four or five years um, within that industry and I actually really enjoy it. Um, and I'm kind of looking at it as a new challenge for me because when I was working in a in the restaurant industry before, I still had a not a great relationship with food, but I didn't realize it at that time. I would just kind of eat whatever. I would eat till I was stuffed. I would hang out with people after work and eat and you know have some drinks here and there. Um, I've never been huge on alcohol. It's just I like using my calories towards food and not drinks. Um, but you know, every once in a while, I would still enjoy a couple drinks here and there. But I am looking at this new job as not only a way for me to kind of save up some money and get out on my own again, but just building my relationship with food in a more hands-on way because I'm going to be surrounded by it all the time again. Um, I'm probably going to be working full-time there. I really don't... I'm trying to find a lot of... like find what my passions are again, find out what I truly want to do, um, and as much as I love personal training, I don't know if that's the direction I want to take in the fitness industry or if I want to continue in the industry job-wise at all. Um, I really, really want to build up my online client base, um, and that's kind of one of my biggest goals right now outside of working at a restaurant, and I think that I will have a little more time to put towards clients and towards programs having this job. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking at it as, you know, a blessing in disguise, whether it's giving me more time for my online clients or uh, whether it's just helping me to build my relationship and challenge me a little bit with food. Um, as crazy as it sounds, I mean, sorry, bugs. Um, I think that it, it'll be really good for me just to kind of be able to say no and not necessarily restrict myself, but just know that, okay, maybe now I don't need this and I can feel comfortable saying no and not feel like people are judging me or anything like that. But anyway, that'll kind of lead me into my intuitive eating, my part one transition. Um, the reason it's a part one is because I don't really know where I'm at yet. I have kind of just started and it's going to be a long journey. It's not like it's going to happen in a week. It's not like I can just automatically 100% trust my body and go straight into intuitive eating after being a macro tracker for so long. Um, I want to preface this by saying like I truly believe that macros, and I've said this before, but I truly believe they changed my life and they really helped me to begin to understand nutrition a ton better. I mean, they don't talk about it enough in school, people don't take nutrition classes, and for me, I took one, but learning by, on my own about macros and about nutrition truly helped me to see how it can affect my body and how it can affect the bodies of other people, and I think that it's a powerful tool to have in your toolbox, like, for any aspect and any person, um, 
but I definitely think there's a point where it may not be the best choice and I think it just kind of depends on where you're at in your journey I mean I saw a uh, post today and it truly like I absolutely loved it it said this lifestyle it's not a marathon it's not a sprint it's exactly what it is it's a lifestyle I mean it's a lifelong journey of trying to better yourself better your health it's not a quick fix it's not dieting cons constantly because you feel like you have to it's about finding what works best for your body and not necessarily feeling like you fall off track but just continually striving to be more balanced and love every part of it which is extremely difficult um, for most people and myself included I mean I'm not nowhere near perfect and I still have my doubts I second guess myself a lot a lot a lot and I constantly I'm worried about whether I'm under eating or overeating I'm still struggling with the whole weight gain aspect of this industry like after cutting for so long after cutting for five or six months and then now kind of aiming to put on weight but at the same time not tracking calories to do it it's intimidating and I'm learning how to retrust my body and retrust my hunger cues and get in tune with what my body is asking for whether it's veggies hopefully you guys can still hear me the air conditioner just turned on um, but just fueling my body with more uh, vegetables and whole foods and that was always a part of my diet but I feel like not tracking now I'm more likely to add them in because I know how important they are and I don't want to under eat on my micronutrients either so I'm still getting used to not thinking about the numbers um, there's been a couple days that I have kind of tracked my food later Layla stop it um, there's been a couple days where I go back and add my food to see where I'm at um, but then I find myself sometimes I'm I'm kind of short on calories but then I find myself eating when I'm not hungry and that doesn't necessarily make a great relationship with food so I've I'm I'm so close to deleting my app I'm so close and I feel like I just need to do it but I also know that eventually I will want to continue. I'll probably want to track again in the future. Maybe not. I honestly have no idea at this point. Um, but it's just, it's going to be a process. And I have felt a lot better. I mean, there's days where I get a little low energy and I'm like, okay, I probably should have eaten more at this time. Um, or maybe like there was one day I went to bed hungry and I was like okay that's never happening again like I'm not gonna go to bed hungry when I don't need to um, I need to fuel my body before and after my workouts um, and use that fuel towards my workouts which I will talk to you a little bit about in a, or in a bit um, but it's there's just a lot of different aspects that go into it and right now I'm focused more on like I haven't meal prepped in since I moved and it's actually been kind of nice because I've been able to eat what I want I haven't been like I have I love meal prepping and I've done it for months like over a year probably I've meal prepped and it's so helpful when I you have a super busy schedule but since I've been home like I don't have a huge like I don't have a ton going on and it's been very nice actually um, but I don't feel like I need to meal prep because I can choose what I want to eat based on how I'm feeling throughout the day, which has actually been pretty nice and it's helped, I think, my transition a little bit more um, and it's helped challenge me a little bit so I don't have my meals prepped at night and I've really been trying to focus on spending time with family and kind of trying to incorporate their meals into mine, whether it's eating the exact same thing, whether it's kind of taking part of it and adding my own things. I'm not necessarily using this as a free-for-all to go crazy, but I'm still trying to find that balance between like the healthier foods and things that will truly fuel my body and make me feel good, and then the treat foods. And I honestly think I've done a pretty good job. Like I feel like I'm about 85-15 right now, maybe 80-20 at times, but I can't tell you how freeing it is to be able to eat my food and not put it in my phone and knowing that I can stop when I'm full 
and I can still make progress. Like, it's just, it's this thing that, it's this thought that people think might be so easy and so simple, but it's like mind blowing how difficult it was for me to get to this point. And it's like, I don't have to stuff myself. People lose their hunger cues and they lose their in intuitions about what they can eat. And they don't understand that it's even loss. Like they, they just eat until they're full or they're consistently making bad choices and unhealthy food choices because they don't think they have an option or they just think, okay, since I have this, I'm just gonna go all out. I don't think that way anymore. Like if I'm not hungry and there's a donut there, like I'm not gonna eat the donut because I'm not hungry. It's not because it's bad and I'm not gonna eat it, but it's because I'm truly like, why would I eat when I'm full, you know? And it's something that I think I have tr struggled with for a long time and I didn't realize it until like the past year and even more so just the past couple months. And it's something that I truly hope that I can share with more and more people because I don't think they realize it either. Um, but right now my goal is just I want to keep updating you on how I'm feeling. I want, my goal is to just continue fueling my body, feeling good, eating what I want, when I want. And it is hard for me to see that, like I'm not even weighing myself, but it's hard for me to think about gaining weight, but I know it needs to happen, especially with my training goals. I still kind of want to, I still want to put on some muscle. I still want to build specific areas of my body because uh, the sport of bodybuilding that's what it is I want to build my body my health my mentality everything and I want to kind of so basically how I'm going about that is just kind of consciously eating a little bit more like not going like I said not going crazy but just eating more of what I'm already eating um, that's kind of how I'm going about eating, like trying to build muscle and eating some more calories. Um, but I'm also just focusing on being more, like focusing on my health, my digestion, my, like, I have fairly low blood pressure and it causes me to be super cold all the time. And there's like, I can kind of get like almost hypoglycemic if I know I haven't eaten in a while and so I have to make sure that I'm fueling myself so I don't get super shaky or like feel kind of like dizzy and stuff like that so it's something that I'm working on you know kind of controlling there's no like medical thing I can do about it at least not that I know of um, but yeah just focusing on my overall health right now so that I can continue this lifestyle for my entire life after this um, I am only 22 years old and as much as I love the competition lifestyle and the, well, I don't know that I would say I love the entire lifestyle of it, but I love the process and I, I got everything out of the prep that I wanted and it wasn't even just getting to stage, it was just seeing how I, like, how my body reacted, seeing how I could get down to a lower body fat scene, like just a bunch of different, like knowing that I can do something like that, something so challenging that most people couldn't do, that's what I wanted to get out of it. And I did. So I've said it before, I don't know if I ever will actually compete, um, but I like the idea of training for life right now. And so going into my actual training, I kind of am, so I, focused on strength the past couple weeks, um, focused on building my bigger lifts, but I'm getting a little more into the volume and the hypertrophy ranges now, um, and I'm kind of leaning more towards like supersetting and just being more athletic. So there's been a lot of people that I've seen and as much as I love the bodybuilding, I wanna kind of incorporate more like functional movements, more core stability, um, more mobility work because um, my shoulder mobility is not great um, and just like I said train for life I mean worry like focus on my cardiovascular health do cardio when I want to when I feel like it but throw in some like hit circuits every once in a while so on my Instagram I posted a leg day today it was all supersets it was a little higher volume um, and it felt great like Honestly, it was one of the better lists I've had in a while and I it's because I was like sweating my heart rate was up and I haven't had that in a long time like I would go through lifts and 
I wouldn't sweat at all. And part of it was because my gym in, in Chicago was literally an icebox. And like I said, I'm cold all the time. So I would have a sweatshirt on and still not be sweating my entire workout. Um, but that's besides the fact. I was dripping. I had my heart rate up. I was doing kettlebell swings and stuff that I haven't done in a while. And it felt great. Like, I really want to incorporate more of those hit type training sessions into, or like, uh, hit circuits into my training sessions. Um, and I also want, so I've been wearing my Fitbit a lot more, which has actually really helped because when I was in Chicago, I was walking all over the place. And I knew that coming home, my neat would be a little lower because I'm not as active consistently throughout the day. Um, but when I do start my job at Buffalo Wild Wings, I'll probably change because I'll be walking around like crazy anyway. But I've been aiming right now for 10 to 12,000 steps, which is, I mean, it's a high number for some people that are at a sedentary job. But for me, that's actually pretty average. Um, I remember when I used to work at a restaurant, I, I could get up to like 20,000 steps a day easy if I worked, I, whether it was one shift or a double or whatever. Um, so I'm not really worried about getting my steps in once my job starts. It'll be the days that I don't work that I'll have to really try and get those steps in. Um, and then the other thing I have is pull-ups. So working on my strength towards pull-ups. My back might have gotten stronger and my goal is still building my back. But I have never been able to do a pull-up ever in my life. And I've gotten like half of one. Like recently I've gotten half of one and I just really want to get one freaking pull up. And I know that it's probably mental and I could probably do one right now, but if I can, then my goal is five. My goal is to get at least five push ups by the end, like in the next couple months, I don't have a smart goal set for it yet and I probably should, um, and like a plan to get to that point. But like I said, training for life, kind of throwing in some more athletic type stuff because I've been an athlete my entire life and I kind of miss the, the higher intensity of training and stuff like that. So I'm going to kind of be incorporating both bodybuilding style, sorry guys, both bodybuilding style and more high intensity circuit style, hit training, anything like that. But I will keep you guys updated. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry I just sat and talked to you the whole time. Um, but I will keep you updated on my intuitive eating. And I will talk to you guys later. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. And I think that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. See you later.